12 hours from now, more than 100 new Colorado laws will have an impact on your life at home, at the office, on the road, and in the community. Tonight, we are breaking down some of the big ones. Denver 7's Brandon Richard gets us started with new laws to protect you at work. It's a moment Colorado State Senator Faith Winter will never forget when she came forward publicly to share a very personal story. During the Me Too movement, I came out against my own sexual harassment in the state house. Uh, who was a fellow Democratic legislator, and it resulted in him being expelled. Six years later, she hopes a new law she pushed for will protect others in their workplace. The POWER Act takes effect Monday. It updates the definition of harassment in Colorado and lowers the standard for harassment claims. It no longer needs to be considered severe or pervasive. We know that under the previous law of severe or pervasive, you were less likely to be believed. Uh, you weren't likely to win in court. This will create a safe work environment that everyone can show up to work and expect to be safe. Opponents worry the law will harm businesses. A single comment could get an entire company pulled into court for years. Winter says companies that provide a safe space have nothing to worry about. If you did the training, you did the investigation, you had a response, this isn't going to take you to court for years. Now, in addition to the POWER Act, two other workers' rights laws will go into effect Monday. One provides more protections for public employees when it comes to discussing issues in the workplace. The other aims to prevent age discrimination. The Job Application Fairness Act will ban employers from asking for age-related information on applications. Information some say leads companies to discriminate against older applicants. Age discrimination is a real problem. Studies from AARP show that the problem was significant before the pandemic and has only grown since. While the bill takes effect Monday, employers will have until July 1st of next year to update their applications in Denver. Brandon Richard, Denver 7. Thank you, Brandon. And to give some context on why these laws were so important, the Colorado Civil Rights Division investigates workplace harassment and says over the last three years, less than 5% of claims had enough evidence to make a case for discrimination. It's not just laws relating to workers' rights. There's a mountain of legislation taking effect tomorrow. Going in depth, help is on the way for renters. One major change limits what landlords can put in rental agreements. They can no longer charge fees, damages, or a penalty if renters fail to provide a notice of non-renewal before their lease ends. They also cannot make them pay fees or markups above what the landlord paid for third-party services. Another new law will cap the minimum income requirement to twice the cost of monthly rent. It also limits the amount a landlord can charge for a security deposit to just two months worth of rent. And as we've reported, the state's new move over law starts tomorrow. CDOT hopes this will provide protections to all drivers on Colorado roads. The new law requires drivers to move over a lane for any stationary vehicle on a highway with its hazards flashing. The original law only required drivers to move over for emergency vehicles, tow trucks, and public utility service vehicles. If you can't move over, Colorado State Patrol says you have to slow down to at least 20 miles per hour below the speed limit. This is something that the Colorado State Patrol will take enforcement of very, very seriously. The risk out there is so much bigger than just our law enforcement and first responder community. Um, it could be your neighbor. And if you do not follow these new rules, you could face a $150 fine and get three points on your license.